Howdy, everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. The dictionary defines an imitation as that which is made to resemble something. Well, that just about describes most imitations of Horlicks malted milk. They only resemble Horlicks. For quality and results, they do not begin to equal it. For one thing, Horlicks was the first, the original malted milk. It was discovered 50 years ago by Mr. William Horlicks and has since then been recommended by physicians all over the world. It contains rich, full cream milk combined with extracts of the finest wheat and malted barley. From the very beginning, Horlicks enjoyed a tremendous popularity, a popularity which in a few years was to circle the world. Of recent years, many imitations have appeared on the market resembling Horlicks, the original. But none of them could match this famous malted milk, either for quality or results. Today, as always, Horlicks is the leader. That's why, if you want the best, you should insist on Horlicks malted milk. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. After Lum and Abner paid Squire Skimp $100 on two different occasions for finding the diamond that was lost in Pine Ridge the other day, the old fellows returned it to the stranger who lost it, only to find out that it was an imitation. And they failed to collect the reward. Well, as we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum and Abner down at the Jotham Down store, where the main subject of conversation is still about the fake diamond. Listen. Well, let's quit talking about it. It's done over now. Just forget it. Well, I can't forget about it. Every time I try to forget it, that makes me think of it again. Well, I'm tired of hearing your mouth about it. Every time I think about Squire beating us out of two hundred dollars, I'll get that dead brain mad. I could go right over to his place and give him a licking. Well, go on over there and give him a licking, in if that'll make you feel any better. Well, I ain't going to get her money back, whipping Squire. Why, of course not. Well, I don't see no use to go over there and start a fight with him. Well, I never told you to give him a whooping. You did, too. You just now said for me to go on over there and do it. Well, yeah, I said that, but I just... Well, I don't think it looked right, me being the constable here, supposed to uphold the law, going around starting fights with folks. Why, of course not. Well, what you trying to get me to do it then for why don't you do it yourself if you want him whipped so bad? I never said nothing about wanting him whipped. You is the one that kept talking about going over and giving him whooping. Yeah, let's just forget about it. You wouldn't be no match for Squire, no how. He'll weigh 200 pounds. Why, of course he will, that big bully. Why don't he jump on somebody's side if he wants to fight? Picking on me because I'm little than he is. Why, he ain't trying to start no fight with you. No, he better not, neither. I'm just mad enough right now to go over there and beat the everlasting daylights out of him. Well, go on over there then and do it. Quit talking about it. There you go, trying to act me into it again, Lum. I thought we argued that out just now. Well, we did, but you just keep saying that you want to fight, Squire. Go on fighting. Well, yeah, but I don't think you ought to let me do it. They ain't going to get us no far. Well, it ain't none of my business what you do. You ought to be old enough to look after yourself for this time. Yeah. I don't believe I'll go. Maybe I can quit being so mad. You know, that's my trouble. I just fly off in the handle. Lose my temper too quick. Get me mad and I don't know what I'm doing. Hardly. Well, if you keep thinking about how big Squire is, I don't think you'll have no trouble controlling yourself. <laughs> no. Uh, and it's a good thing he ain't here right now, I'll say that. Yeah, it sure is. That blame him. How far is over to his place? Well, you know how far it is. You've been over there a thousand times. See his house from here. There's it, it's right over on the hill, younger. Yeah, but now hit the heat farther than it looks, Lom, the way that road circles around there. Well, take that shortcut through the field over there, then. Oh, I don't know, no. Now, that's awful low ground through there. I I'm feared it'd be awful muddy through there after that rain we had last night. Well, go around the road, then. Well, there ain't no use to go clean around the road when you can cut across that field, Your Honor. Yeah, but you said the field was muddy. Well, it is. Oh, for goodness sake, sir. And if I have to go clean around the road there, why, it'll take me too long. I don't believe I can stay mad that long. 
might get over there and I wouldn't be mad no more and he would. And, and what would I do? I don't know. Reckon I could take along a present of some kind. A present? Yeah, what'd be nice to give for? To give him? Yeah, some kind of a nice present. I wish it was Christmas. Uh, reckon when his birthday is. What you talking about giving him a present for? I thought you were going to give him a whooping. Yeah, well, I was going to, but, uh, well, we're so busy here. May- maybe I better not leave a store on. Well, we ain't busy. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. I can look after things for myself. Grandpap will be back directly anyhow. Yeah, that blame it. He's always showing up right at the wrong time. Well, go on over there if you're going. I thought you wanted me to forget about it. I do. We've got to decide on them plans for remodeling the store here. Well, you need me here at the store then, won't you? Why, sure. Well, good for you. <laughs> Yeah, let's quit talking about squire. Yeah. Every time I get to thinking about it, I get so dead blame mad I could go right over to his place and beat the everlasting daylight out of it. Oh, oh, wait a minute. You need to hit the store, don't you? <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah, ain't no use to keep talking about it, Abner. We are lucky to get out of that diamond deal easy as we did. Oh, yeah. Lost two hundred dollars, but that's better than it would have been if we'd have had to pay that fellow a thousand dollars for that diamond he lost. We can thank Grandpap for that. Yeah, well, Grandpap just beat me to it. I'd just fix and run him out of the store myself. Yeah. You, you about like me. You believe the whole story. May as well admit to it. We'd have both paid him the money if it hadn't been for Grandpappy Spears. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon so. But I was awful mad, though. I know that. I know I was mad. I can recollect that. Yeah. Well, the thing that scared that fellow off when Grandpa threatened to call the sheriff out here from the county seat. Yeah, yeah, that's what done it. <laughs> <laughs> he never wanted to get up mixed up with no sheriff. I uh, know, sir. Everybody could tell he's a fear to face the sheriff here. <laughs> Boy, that, that shows he was a crook right there. Why, sure. And Squire's bound to have been in cahoots with him all along through that low down Squire Smith. Of course he was. Of course. But proving it's another thing. We say he was, and he said he wasn't. So what you gonna do? Ma, I'm going over there and get... Oh, oh, that's right. Well, Grandpap says he's going to get that $200 back for us anyhow. Uh, what about the damn plans you're talking about? Right here. Right here. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. I see them. Well, they see interested again. Yeah. She's talking about giving Squire a whooping. Just forget about that now. Well, I'm trying to forget it. I keep reminding myself every time I think to forget it, I think to start it over again. Now, here, I was talking to Ezra C. Stunk this morning. He says he'll do the carpenter work in the store for a hundred dollars. Hundred dollars. Yeah. Well, Eddie's right handy with the saw and hammer, all right. He's always laid out here at that casket making ever since I recollect it in Pine Ridge. Yeah. Only trouble, Eddie can't read or write, and he couldn't tell nothing about these plans I've got drawn up here. Yeah. Well, I I wouldn't hold that again, Eddie. Mom, he showed them plans to my how everybody's come in the store here. And, so far, you're the only one that can tell anything about it. Yeah, uh, looks like I'm about the only architect around here. Oh, my goodness, my goodness, Lom. What's uh, the matter? Uh, Squire, look, he's coming in here. Squire, here. Yeah, good. Uh, now you won't have to go over there to give him that whooping. Who? <laughs> Quit who? Why are you talking about going over and giving him whooping a while ago? Yeah, but, but don't you know, Lom, we decided I better not do that, you know. <laughs> oh, Squire, don't know what he's walking into. Now, Lom. Oh, don't you let me start no fight with him now. If, if I get to saying a batch of stuff I oughtn't to, why, you just make me hash up. Tell Squire I don't mean it. No, sir, I'm going to tell Squire everlasting word you Now, don't it. you do it now, Lum. <laughs> I was mad when I done that. I get mad and I don't know what I'm saying. I ain't responsible well, for what I say. Well, all right, everybody right, just got no, don't tell him, because <laughs> I, I don't think I'm in it. No, neither one of us don't want to act mad. No, that's the time. <laughs> yeah. Fool him, won't we? Well, what I mean by that, I'm going to try to figure out some way to get even with him, and if he knows we're mad about it, well, he's going to be watching us awful close. Why, sure. I want to thank him, I want him to think that we forgot about the whole incident. Yeah, yeah, that's the time. <laughs> well, yeah. well, howdy, Squire. Yeah, hello, Squire, old boy. Come in. <laughs> well, how are you today, Squire? Why, all right, I guess, Mom. Well, how are you, gentlemen? Oh, just only tolerably, sort of down with the rheumatism again. Yes, well... Sit down, Squire, sit down. No, no, thanks, Mom, I can't stay. <clears throat> just dropped by here, I heard some bad news about you fellas. Bad news about us? Well, yes, uh, somebody was to tell me that uh, 
That stranger, you know, uh, uh, refused to give you the $200 reward for that diamond ahead that you found. I just heard it a while ago. Yeah, well, he claimed it was a fake. Well, yeah, that's what he said. Said it wasn't the one he lost to. Yes, well, that's what I heard. That's too bad, sure. I just hope that uh, you men don't think that I had anything to do with it. Oh, no, sir. No, I hadn't thought no. nothing about that. Oh, no, that never entered our heads at all, sir. Of course no. not. Well, uh, just to prove to you that I want to do what's right, I'm going to give you men your $200 back. You mean you're rather than to have you think for one minute that Squire Skimp would beat two of his best friends out of $200, I'll gladly give you the money back and take the diamond. Or, uh, that is, the stone that I told you we thought was a diamond. Mm, I don't know what to do, hardly, Squire. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do, man. I'll make it $300, not a cent more. That's my top price, $300. $300. Don't be long, can't you talk? Tell him he'll take it before he backs out. You sure will say If you want to do it, recollect it's your own proposition, though. Well, uh, have you got the diamond room? Oh, yeah. yeah. Grandpap took it into the county seat for me, sat it in, had it set in a ring for me. Uh, yes, that's what he was telling me. The uh, is aiming on giving it to Evelina for a engagement ring. But, of course, if you want to give me $300 for... There it is. Yeah, yeah. Now, give us some money, sure. All right, bogey squire, that's sure fair, I'll say that. I knowed all along that you'd do the right thing about it. <laughs> I was just telling them a while ago I was aiming on giving you a nice present. <laughs> Wasn't I long? Shut up, Evelyn. Well, uh, here you are now, Lom. Uh, there's uh, 20 and uh, 40 and 60... And 80, 100, 120. Well, this certainly does not sound like Squire Skin. <laughs> Something wrong. And now, here's an interesting letter from Mrs. Newley Smith of Akron, Ohio. She says, I have been using Horlicks malted milk for my baby daughter, and have found there is no other food that can equal Horlicks for infant feeding. I couldn't find a single other food to agree with her. Before I tried Horlicks, I had heard it mentioned on the Lum and Abner program every evening. This, and the fact that a neighbor in Aspen also recommended it to me, decided me to get a package. To my surprise and delight, there was a big change in my baby after only the second feeding. She has gained about a pound a week. I can surely recommend Horlicks malted milk to mothers who are in doubt about food for their babies. And so can we, Mrs. Smith, very sincerely. For over 50 years now, Horlicks has proved just as beneficial to thousands upon thousands of other mothers all over the world. You, too, can get it, you know, at your druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor. This is Carlton Brickett, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all good night and good health.